Hello, I'm Anika from Made to Sew and welcome to my Sewing for Beginners series. Now in this video we're going to be chatting about what stitch should I use. So you now know how to thread your sewing machine, you know how to basically use it, but I think a lot of people have a decision to make as to well what stitch should I be using for the project or the garment that you're making. And this really depends on what you want to do. What are you making? And what is the fabric that you're using? Now, when it comes to everyday sewing, a straight stitch is the stitch that you're going to want to do. And that is a stitch that pretty much every sewing machine will do. So a straight stitch is your bog standard everyday joining stitch for pretty much whatever project you're making, whether you're quilting, garment sewing, making accessories, a straight stitch is the main stitch. Now when it comes to using a straight stitch, there are a few different varieties that you can use. I would suggest that a standard straight stitch length on your sewing machine is 2mm to 2.5mm. However, you can reduce this length and by reducing the length it works well on very delicate or fine fabrics, but it's also useful as what is called a reinforcement stitch. A reinforcement stitch is something that you might want to do to add a bit of strength into your sewing or to use as a stay stitch in garment sewing. If you're interested in learning more about how to complete these stitches, I do have a tutorial on how to sew a straight stitch where I show you the variety of straight stitches that you can do and their uses. Now other on the other end of the scale, a straight stitch in a large size, so say four millimeters or greater, can be useful if you're wanting to baste or tack something. And that sort of hold the layers of fabric together loosely whilst perhaps you try it on or you check that it works, the, the project that you're making. And you can also use a stitch length of four millimeters if you're wanting to gather or ease something. So you're wanting to gather up a skirt to fit onto a bodice. A larger length on a straight stitch is also useful if you're wanting to do some top stitching or if you're stitching with a thicker fabric. As I said, the delicate lighter weight fabrics usually need a smaller stitch length and the thicker heavier weight fabrics can have a larger stitch length. But a larger stitch length is generally useful when top stitching so that it makes the stitches nice and visible. And that just looks more professional. Now, your straight stitch is, as I said, your bog standard stitch, but it doesn't work for every fabric. So, what happens if you're working with a stretchy fabric, perhaps a knitted jersey fabric, or even a stretch sort of leotard or nylon fabric? Then you're going to want to have a look at doing a zigzag, or incorporating a zigzag into your stitching. Now, I like to do what I call the wonky straight stitch, which is basically a zigzag stitch with a very small width. So you're going to keep the length of this at 2 to 2.5 millimeters, but you're going to make the width about 0.5. So it looks, as I said, like a wonky straight stitch. By incorporating a zigzag stitch into your sewing, you'll have a little bit more give in the seams and it will help to allow the fabric to still stretch slightly. You may find that you have a stretch stitch on your sewing machine. My stretch stitch looks like this. And again, it's a very small zigzag stitch that you can use to join stretchy fabrics together. A zigzag stitch is also the stitch that you're going to want to use if you're wanting to sew elastic to something, perhaps you're making lingerie or a leotard or swimwear, something like that. You're going to want to vary between doing a standard zigzag or a three-step zigzag where you stitch three stitches for every zig and every zag. Another option that you can use for sewing stretch knits is what is called a reinforcement straight stitch. Now this is a straight stitch where the machine will sew forwards, backwards, forwards, forwards, backwards, forwards. So it's effectively sewing over itself. And you will find in some dressmaking patterns when you're working with a stretch jersey, they will ask you to double stitch. And by all means you can do that. You would go along with a straight stitch once and then you would simply sew over yourself. The reason why they're suggesting you do that is because you're not allowing the garment to stretch actually at the seam, but you're helping to prevent the straight stitch from breaking. Because the fabric is stretchy, it could stretch 
and break the stitches. So by using this reinforcement stitch or by completing a double row of stitching, you will help to prevent the stitching from breaking. I also like the reinforcement stitch as a decorative stitch if you're perhaps wanting to do some top stitching or you're wanting to have a very visible row of stitching on a garment. So what if you want to finish the edges of your fabric? That's when you can also go to a zigzag stitch. And I've got two tutorials that I will link here. The first one shows you how you can do a zigzag stitch and trim close to it. The second shows you how to use a zigzag stitch that will stitch over the edge of the fabric and again help to prevent it from fraying. You could also see if your sewing machine has what's called an overcast stitch. Mine has a couple of options for an overcast stitch and this again will sew over the edge of the fabric and help to prevent it from fraying. I show you how to do that in these tutorials. Finally, are you wanting to do some hemming? Do you want to hem the bottom of a top or a dress that you've made? If that's the case, you can by all means do a straight stitch. And often if I'm doing a straight stitch for hemming, I might increase the length ever so slightly. It does depend on the fabric that I'm working. But as I said, thicker fabrics, you might want to increase the length slightly so that it looks more visible and more premium. The other technique that you can use is a blind hem stitch and hopefully your sewing machine will have a blind hem stitch option. You may have a couple of options and I'll pop a link here on my tutorial that shows you how to complete a blind hem. Obviously if your machine doesn't have this function you can hand sew your hem instead. So hopefully that has cleared up the stitches that you could do. It really depends what you're making, what you want to use that stitch for and the fabric that you're working with. Please feel free to browse the rest of the Sewing for Beginners series. Hopefully it will answer some other questions that you have when it comes to using your sewing machine and the stitches that you need to do.